folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which I just saw last night and had a very good time with my family, since we just celebrated my 31st birthday, yep, which I'm going to turn 31 on Monday, May 2nd, and that's my real birthday right there. <laughs> but we had to celebrate it earlier because everybody had to be busy, and I sure had gotten some wonderful gifts for, for my family, and... I'm just happy for that, too. Yeah, because I want to have a good time. But I finally went to see the film that's now becoming highly successful called The Jungle Book. That's based on the book by Rudyard Kipling. Yeah, it's a new live-action CGI adaptation that has an all-star cast providing the voices of the characters. So it's interesting to hear all your favorite actors and you also have the feature film debut of Neil Sadi as Mowgli. Now, Disney actually had several adaptations, although they were coming up with some new adventures. I mean, we had the 1967 animated version that's based on the book, and it does have all all the familiar songs uh, that will later be heard in this version so it's good to see that I'm happy to hear all those again that I remembered and we also had uh, the 1994 live-action version of it which is quite different from many of the adaptations because this is where Mowgli had grew up and that's the one that starred Jason Scott Lee with Sam Neill, John Cleese, Carrie Elves, and Linda Headley, which, sad to say, it's very underrated. It's not even on Blu-ray yet, but it's been on DVD for a long time, along with VHS and Laserdisc. So, hopefully, if this movie gets released on Blu-ray, chances are we'll definitely be able to have a Blu-ray release of the 1994 version. Because I really liked that one, too. I mean, it was far different. We also had Mowgli's story on that from 1998, which was a direct-to-video release, and not a very good sequel. I know there was a second Jungle Book that was released by TriStar Pictures in 1997, that basically just focusing on the next chapter of uh, Mowgli's adventures. And, yeah, it wasn't that great, either. But, hey... Nothing's perfect. Also, Disney had a an animated sequel to the 1967 film called The Jungle Book 2, which we had John Goodman providing the voice as Baloo and and Haley Joe Osmond as the voice of Mowgli. So that's interesting enough. So, anyway, let's um, get to the review. It stars Neil Sedef in his feature film debut as Mowgli along with Bill Murray, Ben Kingsley, Aris Elba, Gina Cardo Esposito, Lapita Youngo, Scarlett Johansson, Christopher Walken, Gary Shandling, who just passed away recently uh, back in March at the age of 66, John Farreau, who's also the director of the film, Russell Peters, and Sarah Arlington. It's written by Justin Marks, you know, based on the adaptation by Rudyard Kipling, and it's directed by John Farreau. The movie begins set in the jungle. We meet a man cub named Mowgli, who's being raised by wolves. That's led by Akila, along with Raksha, and her wolf siblings, as well as the entire wolf pack. Ever since he was brought to them by a black panther named Bakira when he was a baby. Bakira decided to train Mowgli to learn the ways of becoming a wolf. But he faces certain challenges and using all the human tricks by building tools from himself. Which the wolves and Bakira refused him not to do so. But until one dry season, all the jungle animals... I gather around to get a drink of water, which is part of the truce, and 
Mowgli decided to use that tool so he could finally get a drink of water from himself, but Akira refused not to let that happen. That is until an evil tiger named Shere Khan, who just smelled his scent and was planning to attack Mowgli and the rest of the jungle animals. Which uh, Big Hero decided to, to have uh, Mowgli escape all the way through the next jungle so that way he'll be safe. But when he finally went inside to the next jungle he's being taken by a python named Kai we just hypnotized him by squeezing him and looked at his vision of what it was like when he was a baby in which he had his real father who was an Indian who just got attacked by Shere Khan using the red flower yeah which is basically yeah a flame so that you get to see inside the caves of what happened so since he's already been safe, you know, by Bakira. But then afterwards, just when he was ready to be squeezed, we meet a sloth bear named Baloo, who finally saved his life and attacked Kai. You know, woken up, his plan was for him not to hibernate by actually grabbing all the, the honeycombs that's on top of the cliffs. Seeing that he's already afraid of heights, he can't climb all the way on top of it. So he hired him to, to use all the tricks to actually get all the honeycombs out of there. So that way he can have his own honey um, inside his own cave. But he winds up getting stunned by bees. And then, well, <laughs> he was helped by, along with the other animals too. But Black Hira had finally came back just to see what Mowgli was doing since he already found out about uh, Baloo's tricks of getting the honey. But he was, he was warning them that he's not safe there and he, and he needs to leave until they were getting ready to, to move the next morning. And then when that arrived, Mowgli, who is now training as becoming a man, had just saved a young elephant that's being trapped inside a hole, along with a herd of elephants that's that just came to to save the child. So it just proves that using his bravery to to save someone. So it proves that uh, you don't have to become a wolf to do any of this stuff. But then, they are about to tell them to reform the, about what happened to Akila, since uh, Shere Khan had just took over the jungle and, and kidnapped um, wolf siblings and the rest of the animals. But when Baloo told them to leave, as he just warned, uh, as he warned Bakira, he was being kidnapped by tons of monkeys that's being led by an orangutan named King Louie who warns uh, Mowgli by doing a job for him to actually bring in the red flower to attack Shere Khan who we begin to suspect that uh, after all this time we begin to find out about Akila's fate so it was up to Mowgli to save all the animals from Shere Khan I was very impressed by this film. It, it did a very good job um, telling the story about what was it like if Mowgli had soon become a man, you know, using his bravery and courage to do so. He has a lot of funny moments in the movie, some spectacular scenes, and also it does have some serious and dark tones that they put into the story because. After all, they should include that. I even love the moments with uh, Mowgli hanging out with the animals, including the wolves, and the fact that he was helping out uh, the wolf siblings and all that. And 
I even loved that moment when he was actually hugging um, Aquila like that. In that particular moment when it was raining. Because they knew that he was going to leave anyway. Yeah. Yeah, there were several sad moments that definitely uh, was very touching. I'm glad to see that I get to hear the, the song Bare Necessities that's sung by Bill Murray. And of course, uh, you got Christopher Walken playing uh, King Louie because he's definitely the, the perfect choice to, to do the voice. And I know we get to hear the song I Want to Be Like You, yeah, which is later on too. I, I'm going to tell you this, there is a reference uh, in the film that I couldn't believe they had the guts to do so, but I thought it worked. And that turned out to be on that one scene where Mowgli was already being taken by King Louie, and he just found one of the items that's been taken by all the monkeys that they found inside the, the tomb. There was a cowbell. If you watch Saturday Night Live with Christopher Walken, I gotta say that was a pretty nice reference that they put into it. I love all the voice work that they chose uh, for this movie, and it was even great to hear um, Gary Shandling again uh, doing the voice of uh, Aki. And, and sad to say, you know, since he's no longer with us, uh, I'm I'm certain that they did a dedication to him too at the end of the credits. I mean, they should because of his passing. And... And they did a good job with the effects. I mean, they're all done in CGI, you know, using all the mouth movements and, and all the other animal movements that they had for the film. It almost looks too real. Yeah. And it was a perfect location for the jungle, too, because it's seeing that it's supposed to be set in India anyway. It was, um, it was just so impressive having to see this on the big screen, even though I only saw it in 2D, but it just looks just amazing. Because there are some shots that they put into the film where all the animals are, like, moving all the way up close to the screen, so it would have projected the, the 3D effects. And also, um, I love the characters, and I'm glad to see um, they're portrayed very well. I mean, you get to see uh, Mowgli. Well, there are some scenes where he does have some trouble with his acting, but I think he did provide it to the film very well, and I think he did a great job, no matter what, without being too annoying. And... Uh, once again, uh, Baloo, played by Bill Murray, did a great job. I mean, it doesn't sound quite as deep as uh, John Goodman or or any of the original voice actors from the animated versions. But that's okay, because I thought he was perfect. I mean, it's great to hear Bill Murray actually doing a voice of a character that I really love, too, in, in, in the Jungle Book. And, and, of course, Christopher Walken... Did a great job too, providing the voice because he sounds exactly like him. And you, you also got um, Gina Carlo Esposito as Aquila. You got Ben Kingsley as Bahira. He did a fine good job too because that's exactly how he should be portrayed. With Lapita Nayo. I, I also felt that Scarlett Johansson, even though this was uh, the second time he's in a film with Bill Murray, it did seem pretty underused for her character, but because she was only there for a while. But otherwise, she, um, she did it fine. But. I, I'm glad to see that it had a great script that's done by Justin Marks. And the whole idea of, of having a great director and actor, uh, John Farrell, to actually provide it, uh, 
using all that technology to 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 make it more surreal and impressive like you really are in the jungle already and it works and, and the fact that it actually stays true to the adaptation of the book and I'm just glad to see that um, out of its budget of 175 million dollars it's already making up to as of today um, over 600 million dollars hard to believe but it's definitely um, earning a huge profit for this movie and hopefully it continues to go on worldwide but anyway definitely check this movie out especially if you see it in IMAX 3D or even digital 3D and or you just want to see it in regular 2D it's it's fun I definitely recommend it so and it's without a doubt so far the best film of 2016 and they're also going to be planning on making a sequel to this later on too from what I heard so that's interesting I'd like to see that see how it follows I mean I'm hoping it'll be a whole lot better than Mowgli's story <laughs> that's for sure but let's see what happens so anyway I give the Jungle Book five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.